everyone in the last lecture in history standard 10th we began with the chapter historiography development in the west and if you remember we have introduced you the topic and i also requested you to follow the 3 r's read review and recap without wasting much of your time let me begin with the topic in the last period i did discuss about what is history what is the methodology that we need to follow to teach history and i also discussed about how a proper history can be read it can be researched and it can be implemented in real life history is not just the story of past we did discuss that history needs to be relevant and that is why we talk about the word applied history now let me take you to the very first 1.1 well i think i did talk about if you see this here on the screen we talked about the tradition of historiography what am i going to do today my dear friends we are going to discuss in detail as to what are the modern historiography and how this modern historiography helped in the development in order to understand the various historians to carry on their research and the third we are going to talk about the various perspectives of scientific development that took place in europe by this historians and the last that is 1.4 we are going to talk about the various notable scholars who contributed for us in order to understand as to what is history all about so we are going to discuss today as what are the different methodology that was being used how they contributed to the various development that took place in history we will go in detail with the various aspects of history so without taking much of a time i will directly take you to the screen where you can listen to my voice if at all you feel that you would like to ask a question what am i going to do this time my friend i am to going to keep you my whatsapp number open so that you can clarify your doubts so without taking much of your time let me begin with the second part of the first chapter historiography development in the west look at the various methods or various disciplines that is used in historical research for example if you look at archaeology archaeology is the study whereby things are being dug from underground the archival science are the buildings where all the records and the documents are being stored now when you talk about manuscriptology manuscriptology is the script that was been written then and are deciphered later by these historians and as said epigraphy is also the study of inscriptions that you'll find on various things documents and which is studied in detail next is linguistics linguistics is the language so the language is also being deciphered pali language was been used ardha magadhi sanskrit so what happens is in this the historians they try to find out as exactly what was written on those documents coins the next what you can see is the numismatics very clearly say that what is numismatics it is the study of coins now when we are talking about the study of coins let me tell you my friend you can also do your graduation that is your ba and ma both in the subject of archaeology and numismatics so in this you will study about the various archaeological things that were discovered the best example can that be of mohenjojan harappa that is if you remember 1920 when dr rakhal das banerji who was an historian and was doing a study he tried to find out that these two cities were been discovered in the excavation so archaeology is a study of the things that you will find from the underground and the study of the coins the various coins that was been minted during the times of the various kings during the time of the various rulers it talks about it so i hope the concept is clear my friend these are the various methods through which we can come to know about the history of a country now if you look to 1.1 you will come to know that it talks about the tradition of historiography now what is the various tradition that we need to follow in order to understand as to 
what is that method we need to firstly understand that historical research method needs to be critically examined now when you say critically examine it's like exactly when you take a patient to the doctor you try to find out as to what blood group it is you try to find out what kind of sickness is going through you critically examine the details so that the treatment could be done in the case of history you need to examine the sources and the writing of the historical narratives now maybe that one book says that the findings given in this book are right whereas the other may not agree with his findings there is a uh, already an argument going on like whether subhash chandra bose died in a plane crash or not so what are the sources from where you are taking your details the writing of this critical historical narrative is known as historiography you may get one marks question what is historiography so you just need to write the writing of critical historical narrative is known as historiography that's for your 20 to 25 words and you will easily score one marks now a scholar who writes such a narrative is a historian the historian cannot include every past even in his narrative the inclusion and interpretation of historical events by the historians often depends on the conceptual framework adopted by him now what happens is one scholar may have his own thinking he may have his own style of writing like for example if i to be born in the past and if i to be very closely associated with one of the kings i would definitely praise him i will have all the words of praise whereas the other person who would have not been the uh, friend of a king will never definitely write maybe praise him the way i would praise him so it is also depending on the conceptual framework that the writer has adopted his style of writing is determined by that conceptual framework the tradition of writing historical narrative that is historiography was not prevalent in the ancient societies of the world now in the ancient time when uh, people began to live like human beings this tradition of writing did not exist it only began somewhere in the 19th century whereby many historians thought that they need to jot down they need to write and they need to find out the facts but when they started writing it narrating it and they started putting it all together in the form of the book the research what they did it made it very clear that historiography was not prevalent in the ancient societies now however that does not mean that they were not aware of the historical time or were not eager to know about it now as an individual student when we go to a native place it is not that we are not interested in a village but whenever we go we try to find out who always staying before how many members were there in somebody's family who were the neighbors then so it is not that we as an individual if we are so eager to find out about ourselves you believe that these historians what do they do they try to find out what was the kind of the period that it was people also they feel that it is a lead they also pass on the stories of the life and the valor of the ancestors to the next generation now what is valor about the bravery okay now ancient communities all over the world used various means like cave paintings storytelling singing songs and ballads etc for this purpose now in those time when the history was not written how do we come to know about a certain episode or about a certain incident it was these people who wrote down about this very much in the form of either it was in the form of paintings if you go and see the ajanta and the elora or it was in the form of storytelling you know where my great grandfather said it to his son then my grandfather said it to his son that is to my dad and then my dad passed it on to me so you will understand that these traditional means are looked upon as what as sources of history in the modern historiography now you need to understand when we talk about that if this is the modern historiography what it is it is a method it is based on scientific principles it begins with the formation of relevant questions now when you are writing about history there needs to be a proper method that needs to be followed and what is this method it is based on the scientific principles you need to check why how 
when, where it happened. Now, if you look at this, the earliest inscription of Lord Museum, we can find that the above picture, it shows how, you know, this king, you can see right in the front, you can see the soldiers with the spheres. And here you can see that the above picture, what does it show? It shows the fragment of the earliest inscription. A forward marching file of the soldiers holding shields and spheres is seen here. And you can see the general is in the front. Now the tradition of recording historical event can be traced back to summer civilization. Now talking about the summer civilization, I'll give you a link which you can later on uh, read more about it in detail. Now where was this? It was in the Mesopotamia which is the present name of Sumerian kings and the stories of battles that was fought by them. Now what is summer? Summer is the earliest known civilization in historical region of southern Mesopotamia, modern day southern Iraq. It is not in Egypt. Now the earliest inscription shows above dates back in 214 that is 4500 BCE. Initially we used to say before Christ. Now, now it is called as before common era. What does it does? It records a battle that was being fought between two kingdoms. It is now displayed at the Lord Museum in France. So we have already discussed the first point that this method is based on scientific principles and it begins with the formation of relevant questions. Now let us look at the second point. These questions are anthropocentric. What is the meaning, sir, of anthropocentric? It means that we need to study about how did man evolved from an ape man. Or rather, we need to study about the Darwin's, the British biologist, Darwin theory as to how man evolved, how did it become a human being. And this we study through the deeds of the members of ancient human societies of a particular period. Now, when we study about this particular period, you need to understand that the difference of the ancient period that everything that man did was believed that it is because of the God's will or wish. Whereas in the present modern history, it does not suggest any interrelation between the divine and human deeds. There is no relation as to what kind of progress that man is doing present time has anything to do with God. Whereas in the ancient time, everything that man did was based on what? It was based on the divine theory that if a man was suffering from any sickness, it is a punishment that was given to him by God, but which is not acceptable by the present historians because we are studying about the modern historical method. Third point, it says answer to these questions are supported by reliable evidence. Now history always accepts facts on the basis of evidence. The fourth point, history presents a graph of mankind's journey with the help of past human deeds. If you want to understand as to what deeds that the human did in the past, you can trace through the graph of mankind. Now the last it says, it is said that the modern historiography with above characteristics has its root in the ancient Greek historical writing. So if you look at the past, you will realize that history is originally a Greek term. Now this term was been given first time by this great historian whose name was Herodotus. Herodotus, the great Greek historian of the 5th century BCE, used it first for his book entitled The Histories. So what you need to understand that the development took place because of the contribution of these great people. Now we are going to discuss 1.3 development of scientific perspective and historiography. Now if you look at this 1.3 you will find that till the 18th century CE that is common era Europe had achieved a remarkable progress in the field of philosophy and science. Now when we talk about philosophy and science you can trace back to the 17th century where England had already began if you remember with the industrial revolution. The next year says that scholars by then had come to believe in the possibility of studying the social and historical truths by applying scientific methods. Now the historians believe that if they wanted to study about a particular period it can be studied or it can be traced 
if they applied the scientific method. Now the philosophical discussion focused more and more on the objectivity in history and historiography. The major aspect that was now being taken into consideration my dear students, it was on the objectivity as to why does one want to study about that period. Now in the 18th century, all European universities were interested only in the philosophical discourses revolving around divine phenomena. Now all the universities across the world, world famous universities then, whether it was Oxford or any other university, they were very much interested about knowing the phenomena of the divine power as to the God played a major role and whatever said then was accepted blindly. If you remember, I take you back to the 9th standard class, whatever said by the king was considered to be word of the God. That was the kind of the divine phenomena or the power of religion or rather Christianity played here a major role. But what happened tremendously? How did the scenario began to change? It was only when these universities started challenging the writings of the divine power. You can see here in 1737 CE, the Göttingen University, which was founded in Germany, this university for the first time had an independent department of history for the first time. So if there is a question in fill in the blanks, Dash was the first university to begin an independent department of history. The answer would be Göttingen University. If it give you the name of the university, Göttingen University was the first founded in Dash to begin an independent department of history, your answer would be Germany. Later, other German universities also became centers of historical studies. Now, if you look at these three departments, you'll find it with the various universities. One such famous department that we have is University of Mumbai, which is located at Kalina University, that is Kalina Santa Cruz. You have Pune University, you have Kolhapur University and there are many other universities like this today where they have independent department of history. Scholars. Now the contribution of many scholars are important in the development of historiography. Let us have a look at the contribution of few notable scholars. Some of them. The very first, Rene Descartes. 1596 to 1650. René Descartes was the foremost among scholars who insisted on verifying the reliability of historical documents by critically examining them. Among the rules given by him in his book Discourse on the Method. The following is supposed to have a great impact on the scientific method of research according to René Descartes. Never to accept anything for true till all grounds of doubts are excluded. That is what he believed in. The second you can see is Voltaire, 1694 to 1778. The actual name of Voltaire was Francois Mare Eroe, which is a French name. He was from France. He opened that along with objective, truth and chronology of historical events, considering social tradition, trade, economic, agriculture, etc. are or was also usually important in historiography. It gave rise to the thought that understanding all aspects of human life is important for history writing. Thus, it is said that Voltaire was the founder of modern historiography. You need to remember, it may come in the fill in the blanks. George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, he was a German philosopher. Hegel was a German philosopher who was from Germany. He insisted that the historical reality should be presented in a logical manner. He believed that the timeline of historical event was indicative of progress. He also thought that the presentation of history to is bound to change over time as new evidence would come forth. With Hegel's philosophy, many scholars were convinced that historical methods were not of lesser quality though they differed from scientific methods. The collection of his lectures and articles is published in a book entitled Encyclopedia of Philosophical Sciences. His book Reason in History is well known all over the world. It is good to know, according to Hegel, 
grasping the meaning of any event happens in terms of two direct opposites. Human mind cannot understand the true nature of that event without understanding the opposite, for example, true, false, good, bad, etc. In order to understand the true nature of a thing, one needs to know both true and false. Similarly, good and bad. This method of analysis, which is based, is known as dialectics. In this method, a theory is proposed at the beginning, which is called thesis. Then another theory is proposed, which is contrary to the thesis. It is called antithesis. After a thorough logical discussion of the both, a new thesis is proposed, which includes the gist of both the thesis and the antithesis. This process of arriving at the new thesis is called synthesis. Now, Leopold von Ranke. 1795-1886 Historiography of the 19th century was greatly influenced by this man. The thoughts of Leopold von Ranke of Berlin University, which is in Germany, he spoke about the critical method of historical research. He put emphasis on the utmost importance of information gathered through original documents. He also started or stated that all types of documents associated with a historical event need to be examined with greatest care. He believed that with this method it was impossible or sorry it was possible to reach the historical truth. He criticized imaginative narration of history. Collection of his article is published in two books entitled The Theory and Practice of History and The Secret of World History. The next scholar, one of the famous scholar, Karl Marx, 1818 to 1883. Karl Marx, in the later half of the 18th century, started a new school of thoughts which arose keeping in view the new thesis formulated by Karl Marx, 1818 to 1883. According to Karl Marx, his ideas, it was about leaving people. According to Karl Marx, human relations are shaped by the fundamental needs of people. And ownership as well as the nature and the means of production to meet those needs. The accessibility of these means to different strata of the society may not be equal. This inequality causes a division of the society into classes leading to class struggle. According to Karl Marx, human history is the history of class struggle. The class that owns the means of production economically exploits the rest of the classes. Thus, Capital, a treatise written by him, is the most referred book all over the world. Have a look at the Anal School. At the onset of the 20th century, a new school of historiography arose in France. This school is also known as Anal School. Anal School gave a new direction to history writing. It also recognized now that history is not only about the political events, but kings, great leaders, and accordingly politics, diplomacy, and wars. But also about the climate, local people, agriculture, trade, technology, means of communication, social divisions, and their collective psychology, etc. In the historical times, the Annal School was started by French historians. Now let us have a look at the feminist historiography. Once again, the feminist historiography means the restructuring of the history from the perspective of women. The writing of Simone de Beauvoir helped in establishing the fundamentals of feminism. She was French. The feminist historiography emphasized not only an inclusion of women in history, but also on the rethinking of the male dominated perspective of history. It drove historical research to focus in depth on various aspects of women's life, such as their empowerment, employment, 
their role in trade union institutions working for their cause the family life etc in the historical writing after 1990 women were portrayed as an independent social class which was not existing before michael fokalt 1926 to 1984 he also was one of the greatest research historian of the 20th century from france michael brought forth a new concept in historiography he in his book archaeology of knowledge argued that the prevailing practice of arranging historical events in a chronological order is not right he drew attention to the fact that archaeology does not strive to reach the ultimate historical truth but attempts to explain various transitions in the past Foucault felt that explaining the transition in history is more important. He called his method the archaeology of knowledge. Foucault subjected the so far unacknowledged areas by historians such as psychological disorders, science of medicine, prison administration, etc. to historical analysis. The contribution of the eminent scholars I would like to wind up the lesson while stating the scope of historiography. When we say the scope of historiography, history is not just pertaining to the subject, but it extends its content even to the subject like literature, architecture, sculpture, drawing and painting, music, dance, drama, films and televisions. my dear friend i would like to sum up the entire chapter by stating that history is applied arts people tend to understand or need to understand that history is all about applying it in your life i hope you enjoyed this lesson but before i end i would like to give you a small homework in the form of writing the two concepts The first question for homework is explain the following concepts and the first question in it is dialectics and the second question for explain the following concept is annals school you will find these questions in your textbook on page 15 your second question as homework is answer the following in brief there are again two question in it the first one is explain karl marx class theory and the second question is what is feminist historiography i hope my dear students you will like my lesson and feel free to clarify your doubts but please make it a point and remember the three r's read review and recap thank you very much god bless love you all bye